Margaret Cho answers the door and I'm absolutely overwhelmed. I cannot even process that she's standing in front of me and I'm so excited. Uh, oh. No. <laughs> Thank you so much Welcome. for having me. This is amazing. Thank you. I love this house. For months, I've been having visions, dreams, and feelings like I was going to meet Margaret Cho and needed to talk to her. I definitely have been having some very vivid dreams and very vivid visions of a comedian named Margaret Cho, who I do feel I'm meant to meet. I don't know if she's into this kind of thing necessarily. I don't know, uh, you know, the extent of, of her level of openness or interest or how that will align, but for sure, odd enough, um, I've been having lots of specific images catered for her. Wow, gorgeous artwork. Thank you. Oh, hello, friend. <laughs> she likes What a sweetie. You. I definitely believe in all kinds of different things on that, that uh, sort of the paranormal spectrum, um, from psychics to mediums to uh, empaths or, you know, all these things I think have a lot of a lot of information. So as far as from the medium aspect, do you have any objects you'd be curious about me holding I have to? a few different objects. Great. Um, I'm actually wearing some of them now. These are just uh, uh, items of jewelry from my family. Okay. Um, so these are Great. some older things. Okay. And then this too. Great, awesome. So we'll see whatever comes through. Let's see what we can feel. Um, okay, so let me see how to kind of describe Putting jewelry in a sock. So give me one oh second. yeah, that was I, like I, always hiding all their jewelry because of like the you know they would hide their jewelry in socks and then also put it in like a coffee can. That is so random. I'm seeing I'm literally seeing jewelry being put in a sock. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, well interesting. So yeah. Tyler actually saw my family, which this jewelry has been placed in socks and hidden um, in coffee cans uh, all over the place. So you know, and, and for several generations. So as I'm coming through, I have, the, I have an older woman that's popping in. Um, I have a woman who's coming through almost in the way that I would describe as like an aunt kind of a figure. Mm -hmm. So it, it, do you have a deceased yes, aunt? Yes, okay. Cause yes, yes. Because I'm definitely feeling like I'm making that kind of connection. It doesn't feel like mom to me as much as kind of like mm -hmm. the aunt connection. There's family on that end that I'm going to that's acknowledging that they feel like they did not make it here. I would say in the way that this comes through, there is an interesting reference to Washington. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you have family connections to Washington or why she's bringing me to the Washington kind of a connection, but there's a reference, it would be not DC, it would be. You know, when she's coming through, I, I don't think she was afraid to pass in the moment that she did, because mm -hmm. I think that honestly she knew that there was a very strong possibility that I don't feel like I'm gonna get where I'm going. Mm -hmm. um, I don't feel, I feel kind of in and, in and out is the way that I would describe it. The, the person that you're seeing is um, my aunt, uh, she, we called her Kunimo. Uh -huh. And I think this is, uh, most of that is her jewelry. Oh, okay. And she's died, uh, but she uh, was desperate to go back to Korea to die. And she actually died on a plane oh. on the way to Korea. She died over Seattle, oh, so wow. that's where it was. So. Okay. And then she was somebody, I knew that I was her favorite and, and right. she was such a, warm and um, alive person. She was just beautiful, but it was very, uh, the circumstances of her death really were like, she didn't make it there. Right. He really touched on um, my aunt. She made me feel so loved and so um, just buoyed me up always. And so I, I really, I miss that. And so I, I, I just, uh, I love having her around and I love that he saw her. When she comes through, she has a very personal connection to basically feeling like, in her eyes, you represent an empowerment, being a woman. And that's something that, that on her end, she admires deeply. And I feel like through you opening up and through you doing these amazing things and helping people, she herself feels like she's living vicariously through that. Because culturally, you know, it, it, different times, different aspects, and for you, she feels like, through you being yourself, that gives her the most sense of fulfillment in being able to kind of explore that with you. Mm -hmm. So every single step of the way, she definitely is there. In That's having wonderful. That yeah, so she's absolutely lovely. Also interesting, and was, this is gonna sound pretty ridiculous. A couple weeks ago, <laughs> I um, was just hanging out and I heard Robin Williams come through. And he acknowledged that he was going to come through at some point. And so it's interesting because I've, throughout this, I've always had like a weird kind of a connection mentally with you and him. Like I've placed them together odd enough. Mm -hmm. um, but when he did come through, it was very brief and it was almost like he was going to try to come through again. How close of a relationship did you have to him or did you did you know him? I knew him and he was somebody that I saw a lot when I was much younger. Right. Um, 
I met him when I was a child, and then he did comedy at this uh, comedy club that I lived across the street from. Right. So uh, he was very famous at that point, and you know, his death was really, I think, hard for the entire comedy right. community. I, you know, I, I knew him as 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 most people kind of knew him, but then I knew him a little personally, and I think that he was also kind of unknowable. Sure. That he was very difficult to connect yeah. with on a, a personal level because he was uh, very shy. He was a bit embarrassed by his own fame right. and his own uh, largesse because he he people would freak out when right. they'd see him. For me personally, what Robin Williams always did was well, there was like a tough lessons because he would always. Um, bump me at the comedy club so I would have to go on after him and that's how I learned how to do comedy is bombing after him for my entire childhood. I was really a child doing comedy but I had to go on after him. It was so terrible. I learned incredibly well from him so I, I mean I, I, I think that was the greatest gift. He's somebody that I, I still have a lot of um, pain about, you sure. know, a lot of suffering and sadness about because mm -hmm. I don't really it, it's sort of not really resolvable. Right. Yeah. No, understandably. So the way I would kind of put this is that with Robin Connection coming through so strongly, um, the way that I would really put this is that when he comes through, um, for one, he feels like he inspired everybody that he was around. But it's interesting because he himself felt inspired by the people that he got to work with as well. And you're one of those people. Mm. So there's absolutely that connection. When he comes through, I, I don't get any negativity. I feel completely at peace. I feel completely fine. But I think in the way that this comes across is that he was aware of a quality of life that he knew was likely to lead towards the future and didn't want to have to suffer. Mm -hmm. So the way that I would put this is he doesn't so much reference to like, you know, a, a big chemical imbalance as much as I feel like I have another health issue that I just don't want to have to suffer through. Mm -hmm. And that's the way that that comes through. But just please know that he's very much so aware of, you know, your comedy and all the amazing things you're doing. and that. Just as he inspired you, you inspired him. I love that. Yeah. That's really, really nice. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Well, it really felt so authentic, too, that, that he really was connecting to Robin Williams and that um, I, I really could sense it just from his heart. So that, that was a really healing thing for me just to hear that he is at peace now and that that's really amazing. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. It's so yeah. wonderful. It was really amazing. I mean, he's just such a beautiful person, like it's something so gentle and clear about what he sees and he's got a tremendous gift. I think um, it's so amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. So lovely. I think the theme of Margaret's reading when it comes to her family was really heavily focused on her basically taking the torch and continuing it. So in a big way, her family members, who in many ways were very different from her but loved her nonetheless, reference to her continuation and her empowerment as she continued her career and her personal life.